shall lift up their voice, they shall shout for joy, they shall cry aloud and be free, they shall glorify the name of the Lord, it's the blood bought the church, the redeemed, and we are in. Pick up your harp, O Zion of the Lord. Let the earth ring forth with his praise. All his children rejoice from the islands of the sea. It's the blood bought the church, the redeemed. Let the earth be silent, O wind cease to blow. Every created being fold your wings. For there's a new song being sung Amen. with a mighty yes. melody. It's the blood bought the church, the redeemed. the blood bought the church, the redeemed, and we are in the army of the Lord. We washed in the blood, and we are going forth. There is nothing can stop this mighty moving force with a shout of praise. A two-edged sword and stronghold of bondage must fall beneath our feet. Every prisoner held captive must be free. For deliverance has come through the power of it's the blood bought the church, the redeemed. For deliverance has come through the power of the Son. It's the blood bought the church, the redeemed. Number 72 is in command. Oh, I appreciate the good singing. I want them to do that one that they featured the men this morning. It sounds so good uh, that, uh, that he's in control. And I'm glad, thank God, in the midst of a chaotic world, and you know it is, I'm glad to know tonight, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that we all know who is absolutely in control. Amen. Listen to the words, okay? Plenty of volume, y'all. Sing it out. command so glad this old ship has stood a many a storm when this is about I'm glad my Lord is in command Man, so glad this old ship has stood a many a storm when this is about. I'm glad my Lord is in command. He's in command, so glad. This old ship has stood a many a storm when this is about. I'm glad my Lord is in command. Let's everybody take a hymnal, page 542. When we all get to heaven, as we stand.
to speak to each other. You don't have to shake hands. Come on, young people. Don't shake hands, but say hello to one another, all right, while they play. Welcome each and every one of you. We're delighted you're here. We welcome you to the Mountain View Baptist Church for this Sunday night service. And we're honored tonight to have Pastor Doug Rains. He'll be preaching in just a little while. Their family will be singing during the Jubilee, but all of them won't be able to sing tonight, I don't believe. But we're glad they're here. And also Pastor Larry Rains, longtime pastor of the Pleasant View Baptist Church in Taylor, South Carolina. Glad he's here, along with his wife, Miss Chris Rains, here holding the grandbaby, I see. And then, Preacher Finley, we're glad you're here. May God bless your heart and all. Let's have a wonderful time. This is youth choir. Say amen to them. Smile at them just to support them, all right? Support them while they sing, all right?
like, I like Christian music, don't you? I believe it's the only kind you ought to have in your vehicle. I believe it's the only kind you ought to have in your church. I believe it's the only kind you ought to have in your home. Amen. On your, on your devices. Amen, somebody. I wish I had a Bible reader up here. It's the only kind ought to be on your devices is good Christian music that edify the believer, exalt the Lord, encourage the saint of God. We appreciate all the singing, the choir, both choirs. And again, we welcome you tonight. We're delighted to have you in this service. And we want to remind you that we are having supper this Wednesday night. That supper will be at 6 p.m., everybody. And we're looking mainly for our large crowd to be there. And they're having uh, baked spaghetti and chicken Alfredo and all the other stuff along with it. I believe they're ha you having salad bar Wednesday night? Yes, yeah, salad bar. That's some of folk folks' favorite. And so uh, probably going to be a dessert, all the beverages you want. And uh, gearing up, a lot of work already been going on. We appreciate all the work that's been happening, especially yesterday, a very, very busy day around here, and a lot got done. There'll be some more of the guys doing some stuff tomorrow evening. You can speak to Ben or Landon if you'd like to chip in, find some things to do tomorrow evening. They're going to be doing some things around the church properties and facilities, all right? But uh, come to supper Wednesday night at 6 p.m., and then we'll have service, and then Evangelist David Epps will be our, our first Jubilee preacher to kick us off on that uh, Wednesday night. We're looking forward to that, all right? Let's have the ushers come on in. We'll get the regular tithe and the regular offering you give us unto the Lord. And uh, I know that Pastor Doug Rains can share the same sentiment that I'm fixing to share, and that is through all this pandemic and all this uh, shutdowns and all this stuff been going on, I think I even heard him say that, that their giving never went down, it stayed the same or, or better. Isn't that great? And I think I can say the same accurate uh, description here tonight, that thank you for giving through all this, even when we didn't have church, and even now. We appreciate, we really, really appreciate God's people being faithful to give. So here's your opportunity to give one more time. You give tonight. God bless you in the regular tithes and offerings. All right. Thank you. Sing one, what whoever else you sing with. Yeah, Cam, Garth, and Elisa. I want Pastor Range to come up here, Pastor Range. when I say this, I felt like when he came up here, I probably should have just took my coat off and bowed down and shined his shoes. This is the general as far as I'm concerned. He's been the general all these years. And let me, let me share a little known fact that some of you didn't know. This dear brother, although pastored in Taylor, South Carolina for all those years, before he ever, I think, I think before his conversion, I, I believe maybe before his conversion, he was a member of the Tampa Police Department. And so putting him on the spot, they're sitting rehearsed. Pastor Rains, in your days of being a member of the Tampa Police Department, if they were doing then what they're doing now, what would y'all have done? Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. That mayhem would stop, amen. It would stop. Pastor, if you will, it's so good to have you. Would you dedicate the offering for us? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Father, for the hand of God that reached further down than we could have ever reached it. 
I'm glad when you reach, Lord, you brought us up out of a horrible pit in the miry clay. I'm glad you got us stabilized and you directed our path. And we love you tonight. Thank you for this place, the precious memories, Lord, that we have of worshiping God and serving you and living for you and loving you here. And I pray you'd bless the offering tonight. Thank you for every penny that's been given. I pray you'd multiply it, meet the need here, Lord, of the Mountain View Baptist Church and the Jubilee. Uh, give direction in the furtherance of the order of service. Lord, anoint the man of God. Use him tonight. Yes, yes. Speak to our heart. May we leave different than we were when we came. And we'll love you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Lange. All right, this is our first group. You worship with this first trio, all right? <laughs> Get him a mic and say amen to that. Appreciate it so much. There's a, there's, a, there's a sheet down front for still to be able to sign up for volunteers if you'd like to help out during the meeting. Of course, we start Wednesday night all day, Thursday, and Friday. Two services on Thursday, two on Friday. Also, I don't see the list, but you can see Rebecca, some of these other ladies. If you want to help with the desserts, I believe they're going to be bringing desserts in for Thursday and Friday afternoon. So if you ladies would like to, do you have the paper? It's down here too. Okay, I'm sorry. But uh, sign up, bring, make some good desserts, and we appreciate it. One more song, we'll turn this great preacher on.
I just got to say something tonight before we sing. Um, try, try not to cry. I'm about to just to start just shedding tears. I'm a just big crybaby. But I'm thankful tonight. That's what we're song we're singing about. Uh, some of my heroes are already in glory. But I have some heroes here tonight. Yeah. One of them is my dad. Faithful for over 40 years. And then my former pastor, Brother Rains. And then Brother Doug, wherever he's at tonight. I know we butted heads a lot, but when I needed it the most, when I needed somebody to be on me hard, Doug was there to crack me back in line. And I'm just thankful for the heritage that I have that's sitting here tonight. And now my uncle's my pastor, and I just couldn't have it any other way. My heart's full tonight, and I'm just so thankful what God's done for me. Amen. Amen. I've been through some testing and trials It felt like a detour that went on for miles But standing here now looking back I can say, Lord, I'm thankful Some storms I thought I would never survive But here I am feeling so strong and alive The darkness is past and the morning is bright And I'm thankful of my past were a thundering roar. They echoed the guilt that I could not ignore. But they're nailed to the cross and I fear them no more and I'm thankful. Lord, I'm thankful like David after Goliath, like Paul and Silas after the jail. Before service tonight, we produced another video <clears throat> in the study, and that video was about two minutes long, and that was for directions because of the bridge being out. And I would like to encourage our congregation, please, if you will, pick it up off of YouTube, share it on all the social media platforms. There's a lot of negativity about the social media platforms. I'm just about to rail death on them anymore, but there can be some positive things. So if you'll help us, grab that video so we'll get the directions out about the bridge being closed and then pick up the other video that we made about the Jubilee. You could just share it all over everywhere and that would be greatly appreciated, all right? It's an honor tonight to have this preacher here. I love him. 
He was our he was our Mountain View Christian Academy school principal for I'm going to say seven years, maybe seven, six, five, five years, and um, I've known him for a long, 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 long time, and I can honestly say I've never seen him wobble on the axle one time. Yeah. Believes the same thing tonight that he believed when he first started out serving the Lord. And I love him. This is Pastor Doug Rains of the Progress Baptist Church. I believe that's Hendersonville, North Carolina. All right, let's hear him well. Give him undivided attention, all right? And uh, give us some time to dedicate the baby, brother. Right? <laughs> we got to dedicate our granddaughter. Ain't that something? It is. Two grandfathers and got great grandfather we're going to dedicate the same baby. <laughs> so that, that baby ought to have a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope, uh, bit of hope all right? Preach to it. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house. We'll be in the book of Zephaniah chapter number one. Zephaniah chapter number one. Appreciate the invitation, the opportunity to be here. Got a simple thought on my heart. The Lord changed my message. I, um, when Brother Steve asked me yesterday about preaching, I tried to talk him out of it. And uh, he does not take no very easily. And uh, finally he said... Uh, You'll have the honor of preaching at your granddaughter's, uh, what do you say, christening? Uh, did you, did, are we christening her? So he, he pulled the granddaughter card, and uh, I said, okay. And uh, I'm glad to be here. And um, I hadn't said it since the last time I was here, so I'll say it again. I'm thankful for Mountain View and the testimony and its impact in my life. And um, I'm one of a decreasing number, Brother Randy, <laughs> who can say I was in the old church. <laughs> the number that can say that is getting fewer and fewer. And um, I, uh, we, Brother Robbins, ate with our family uh, in Tampa. Mom and Dad were brand new Christians, and our, our preacher brought Dr. Robbins down and uh, bragged on him for about six months before he got there. So uh, we were excited and scared at the same time, and uh, we were feeding him a fresh garden meal. Y'all have heard this story, but I'm old enough to tell the same story twice. And uh, we were feeding him a, gar a meal from the garden, and my three-year-old sister had watched Mama shuck the corn, and she saw those little worms in the end that you have to cut off. And about halfway through the meal, Tammy wanted to be helpful, and she said, everybody watch out for the worms. And uh, there sat Dr. Robbins in all his pomp and Miss Peggy. And Mama just about died. She... <laughs> Tammy didn't walk for three days after that. She... Mama beat the... No, she didn't either. But uh, I didn't know what had happened, but I knew it wasn't good. And I, ju I just didn't feel right there at the table. But uh, we then we moved to the upstate. And uh, first... Uh, revival they had after we moved dad brought us over and um, I still remember I was a little kid I still remember the service and the uh, Lord touched me and um, I'm glad my grandbabies are here I don't know what you think about shouting services but I like them and um, here's one here's, there's a lot of things I like about them I like to get in on them but I, I like them when um, little kids are sitting there with crayons and somebody beside him is having a spell, and they don't even look up. I don't know. I don't, that's is that is that weird? That that just ble they, they you know mommy goes ah you know and the kids just coloring. I, I was a teenager and uh, not stint it. Uh, Ed Ballou was preaching. He said he'd been out visiting one day and he pulled up in the driveway. Got home. Said his little girl was in the play the sandbox playing, heard his wife in the kitchen praying and shouting. She'd pray a while, she'd shout a while. He said, honey, what's mama doing? She never looked up, said she's shouting. She just kept playing in her sandbox. I still like it. Still in the Bible. Still what they're doing around the throne. It's what we'll get to do around the throne one day. And uh, Brother Biddle said you can't build a church on singing, but you won't have much of a church without it. You can't build a church on shouting. 
that it would be an awfully dead place without it. <laughs> Amen. And if, if corona, corona taught us anything, it ought to it stirred a love in our heart for the house of God. Amen. 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 Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse number 12. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse number 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, eh, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. So I'm glad the youth choir sang, that's my God, and we got to worship, and I'm glad the Trios sang, I never heard the first song, it was such a blessing, and then I'm thankful. But the sad truth of the matter is, you can be a member of this church, you can sit here on these pews, and you can be in the very condition that they were in verse number 12. Eh, he's not going to do good. He's not going to do evil. Settled on their lees. That's not a phrase we use. It's not a phrase that very many of us even understand. We know it's in the Word of God and we're going to say amen to it. But uh, we, we recognize settled, but we're not real sure what a lee is, much less plural. Settled on your lees. It's a fruit term. They, they, they got, if you didn't drink water... You, you drunk from a, a, a fruit, a, a, a grapes or something of that line, something with pulp in it, and they didn't have the purification that we do today, and, and so it was often wise to use something like that to add a, 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 some antibiotic uh, to, to the drink to, to where you didn't get sick, and, and so they would, they would crush these fruits, they would crush grapes, they would crush other soft-skinned uh, uh, fruit into the water, and pulp would get in there, and skin would get in there, and it would settle. And if they didn't drink it right away, it would get hard. And it would literally decay right there. So what was intended to bring healing, what was intended to ward off disease, actually brought it on. And, and it would, that's settled on your lees and, and it would literally harden there in the bottom. And if, if they let that happen, the, 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 the long-term effects uh, were uh, sickening at best. They could be deadly at most. And I honestly don't intend to keep you very long. I've just got a simple thought and I want to ask you, are you settled and sour? Have, have you settled? If, if we, we like the word settled. It's a good word. It's a, it's, it's, if, if, if I said that's not a settled young man, you'd say, well, he needs to get settled. We use it in a positive way, but in this text here tonight, it's anything but positive. They were settled on their leaves. Let me lay a little bit of background. Your, your Bible students here, many of you are, and you know that, that fruit and gardens are, are used all through your Bible. It starts in a garden, does it not? In, in Genesis chapter 2 and chapter number 3, that there's a garden. And then I, I want to remind you that at the end in Revelation, there, there's a tree with 12 manner of fruit. So it appears to me God likes to grow things. And, and so I just want us to apply that to our lives. Turn with me to Romans chapter number 11. Romans chapter number 11. Romans chapter number 11 and verse number 17. Romans chapter number 11 and verse number 17. I want to direct your attention to the rescue, the rescue that made us a part of the vine, just by way of introduction, chapter 11 and verse number 17, and if some of the branches be broken off, 
that would be the, the Jews. He came into his own and his own received him not. And thou being a wild olive tree, that's me and you, that's me and you, the Gentile dogs, were grafted in among them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. So just for a minute, would you please remember that glorious day when God rescued you, when, when my dad prayed and said he reached further down than I could reach up. Would you just for a minute remember that day when Jesus turned your life around? I, I'm, I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to get to the conclusion before on point number one. But many times, just remembering where he brought us from is all it takes to shake us up and get us out of that settled on our lees condition. But we were wild olive trees. We were wild branches, and he grafted us in where we had. We never had any deserve. We didn't deserve to be there, and we don't deserve to be there. Today, the rescue. Look in John chapter 15 on our way back to our text. And when we get back to the text, we'll stay there. John chapter number 15. John chapter number 15. John chapter number 15, verse number 8. The rescue. Why did he do it? Let me show you the reason. Look in John chapter 15 and verse number 8. John 15, 8, herein is my Father glorified. If you want to glorify your Father, would you say amen? amen. Don't, don't, we, don't we owe Him everything? Amen. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. There is every reason in the world we ought to be fruit-bearing Christians. And there's not one good reason that we shouldn't be. Boy, I've got, I preach out of Isaiah 5, that fruitful hill where he planted that vine. And, and then that next verse says, And I looked that there would be fruit, and there was none. And I just imagined the heartbreak of that gardener looking for something that never materialized. And I wonder how many of us, he, he looks at us and expects there to be fruit, and there's not any. John chapter 15 verse 8 the reason that he rescued us was so that we could bear fruit he's the he's the root he's providing everything we need if we're not at church if we're not bearing fruit it's our fault back with me to the text Zechariah Zephaniah 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 chapter number 1 In spite of the rescue, in spite of the reason, this is the heart of the message, Brother Randy, preacher. This is the heart of the message. In spite of all that he's done for us, the sad reality is many of us go through life settled on our lees. Saved. Saved, they'd fight you over Mountain View Baptist Church. Saved, they, they love their preacher, they love the heritage that's here, but settled on their lees is the sad reality. I have been in this race long enough to know that you can stand in the choir and sing, it's all, God's got it all under control. And in your heart of hearts, you're cold as a stone. I've been in church long enough to know that you can sit there and somebody over here can be shouting the victory. That's my God. That's my God. And he feels like he's a million miles away. God said in his word in Zephaniah chapter 1 and, and verse number 12, he said, you've got so cold in your heart that you shrug your shoulders and you said, the Lord's not going to do good. And he's not going to do evil. He's just, he's just put us down here and he's just going to let us take our course. I'm saved, preacher. I don't know what you're so upset about. I'm saved. I'm not committing adultery. I'm not out in sin. Get off my case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just leave me alone. I, I'm, I'm going to make it to heaven one day. But it's not worth the price to do what the mountaineers say where I'm at now, to press in. 
to press in, to pay that price, to get in the prayer closet, to get in the Word, to do what Jacob did and wrestle with God. Preacher, I'm tired of that. I'm just settled on my lease. And I have to tell you, I wanted to preach from from uh, one of the other minor prophets about knowing God, knowing God intimately. And and, and God's word says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And uh, for for days, I've been in that passage for a while. And when you called yesterday, I said, okay, I believe that's where the Lord wants me. And late in the night, early in the morning, all through the afternoon, he said, if you don't remind somebody that they're settled on their lease and they need to get out of that condition, he said, you're going to disobey me. I said, I'd rather hear well done than, than preach the message I'd rather preach. So I want to ask you, what is your reality? Why? Why do we get into this shape? Brother Spencer... I believe it is plain and simply this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, he says, we, bear, we carry this treasure in earthen vessels. And he said in the Old Testament, he remembers our frame that we are dust. Brother Josh, the truth of the matter is we clean up real good. And we've been taught to dress up and to respect the house of God. And I say amen to every bit of that. But the truth of the matter is, we've been wearing masks for a long time. It didn't start with Corona. And we dress up for church and we hide behind our King James Bible. And we ain't getting no screens, buddy. We singing out of a hymn book. I'm not... Come on now. And we hide behind all that and we pat our, we yank our shoulder out of joint, patting ourselves on the back, telling ourselves how good we are. I ain't fussing at you. I've heard it all my life. Somebody this week will say this in the meeting. Hallelujah. This is the cream of the crop. We've been telling ourselves we the cream of the crop for so long. We started believing it. Here's what they say in Tennessee. Amen goes right there. We've been telling ourselves we're the cream of the crop so long we've started believing it. And some of our cream has sunk to the bottom and soured. Does your heart burn with love for Jesus the way it did a year ago? Are you passionate for the souls of men the way you were six months ago? Daddy, do you look at those children the way you did last Father's Day and say, oh God, let me raise a family for Jesus? Mama, do you wake up in the middle of the night the way you did a year ago and kneel at their bedroom door and plead the blood of Jesus over them? Preacher, you're you're, you're picking on us. I ain't picking on you. I got about a third, a fourth of this crowd and I'll preach the same thing to them. We all need to be reminded of this. Prone to wonder. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. I heard that song the other day and somebody changed those words. And I sat there, Miss Jada, and I said... Why did you change those words? Surely you don't think you're not prone to wonder. Surely you don't think you could leave the God you love. Surely you don't, that's not your reason. Can I tell you about the last man I heard who said, I don't like those words? He stood in my home church, preacher reigns. He mounted the pulpit and he said, you might have been there. He said, I don't like that line in that song, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. He said, my heart is so passionate for the things of God, I could never leave him. I don't glory in this. He has since been restored. Five years later, I'm working in the chaplain's office at Greenville County. Not my cell phone, the office phone rings. I don't even know how he got the number. Chaplain's office, Greenville County Detention Center. Miss Lynn, I could not understand him for the sobs. 
snubbing like a little child trying to catch his breath. <laughs> Brother Doug. Brother Doug. Yes, who is it? He said his name. He said, I need help. I failed God. I'm far away from God. I've called my pastor and I'm calling some other men to ask him to pray for me. Brother Randy, I wasn't glad. But you know where my mind went? That Sunday night when he said, why would you ever say prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it? And I'm just going to keep on singing prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. And, and about every other time we sing it, I'm going to lift my hand and say, Lord, don't let me fail you. Take me home before I get cold on you. I'd rather them bury, I'd rather the sweet grandbabies look on my cold, dead carcass, but rather than get cold on God. That's how real this thing is to me. I don't want to tell them for 40 years it's real and then them turn around and think that uh-huh. Papa changed his mind. Yeah, it's real. It's still real. It's still real. What is the result of settling on your lees? You get hard. You get sour. You get bitter. Adam, I, 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 need, I tried to research... I, all of you medical people, help me, Miss Sandy. You coagulate. I asked Chris, I said, research, how small can a blood clot be? How tiny can a blood clot be? Everybody in this auditorium knows somebody who died because their body threw, that's the phrase we use, threw a clot. I couldn't find an answer, but I know my veins are small. Yes, sir. They can't be big, but they can take your life. Sure. Yeah. So I don't know why you're settled on your lees, but did you know, Daddy? Did you know, Mama? Did you know, young person who a year ago had the victory? Did you know it could be deadly? My blood is not supposed to coagulate unless there's a wound and it's trying to stop that wound. Some of you, your heart. You say, Brother Ain't you talking to me? I don't, I don't know your lives. He wouldn't tell me anything about you. But I know people. I know me. As your heart Spiritually coagulated. That youth choir six months ago stirred your heart. Stirred your heart. And tonight, smartwatch, day law, look at Miami. Oh my goodness. LA, oh my, those crazy people out west. And we're sitting here going, oh, Lord, that's my, that's my God. And you're three feet away going, oh, I love you. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. Somebody told me about a COVID patient in Greenville and the way the ICU nurse described it to his family member. They said, it's like his lungs are full of honey. And some of you spiritually, I'm afraid your heart, your lungs are full of thick, gooey, hardening honey, fruit, pulp, skins. That's the result of settling on your lees. Here's the remedy. Here's the remedy. When a drink settles on its lees, shake it up or pour it out. And I don't mean pour it out in the garbage or out in the backyard. I mean pour it out in a good way. 
One reason some of us get settled on our lease, we hadn't poured our life into anybody else in six months to a year. We're the center of our own universe. And your science teacher told you better than that. Copernicus did too. Help me somebody. That's true. You ain't the center of the universe. Your mama might have acted like you was if you was a millennial. I don't know how any millennials are going to stay married. You got two millennials. Their mamas and daddies have made them the center of the universe for the last 25 years. And then those two universes collide. That is not going to be good. So, 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 pour out. I, I know they're not letting us in nursing homes, but find somebody who will let you come and visit. Pour out. Get, get outside of yourself. Get outside of yourself and then let God shake you up. And if he has turned your world upside down in the last three months with, with corona, if he has turned your world upside down, that might, he might have been doing you the biggest favor of your life, shaking you up to get you outside of yourself and to get you out of your spiritual slumber and stupor. Are you with me? The, the, the remedy is to be shaken or to be poured out. If that doesn't help you, you're going to harden to the point of poisoning what's left. So i got to ask you two questions. Do you recognize it? Do you recognize it in your own life? Can I recognize it in my life? Whether it's a test. God sometimes does this. You sit in there settled on your lees and somebody on the other side of the church gets excited about Jesus the way I used to. And the sweet Holy Ghost, he don't even need the preacher. Sweet Holy Ghost goes, you used to love me that much. You used to not be ashamed of me. So do you recognize it? The other day we was talking about a situation. Brother Randy, I said to my wife, I said, God deliver me from blind spots. Things in my life that everybody else sees and they're dark and they're ugly and they go right over my head. I'm, I'm blind, I'm ignorant to the fact that everybody else knows it. And I, I, be, I said, I said, I said as, as hard as it would be for me to listen to it, tell me if I've got some. So do you recognize it? And I want to ask you, how are you going to respond to what God's given you this evening? I, I, they told us, Brother Steve, when we were teenagers, they thought we was all called to Africa. And our diet was monkey brains. And if you wasn't surrendered to go to Africa, you wasn't a good Christian. And we wanted to be good Christians. So we all surrendered to Africa and the Amazon. He didn't send us there, but we surrendered. But they'd, they'd preach this. They'd say, if you're not willing, you can at least pray and ask him to make you willing. If you're not there yet, you could at least ask him, so would you? If you, if, if you at least halfway recognize your messed up Lee's condition, would you at least say, Lord, I don't want to stay this way. No, no, no. I don't want to stay this way. Would you at least respond positively instead of the way they did in the text? He won't do good. He won't do evil. If God, Miss Keisha, if God does this, if this is what God, if this is the response in anybody's life, please don't stay there. That's right. Please. Brother Rain's good. Does that mean we all have to shout? No. No. 
No. It means we all ought to love Jesus with a passionate, fervent heart where He alone matters more than anything else. Amen. That is the simple burden of my heart. Are you settled on your lees? If so, let somebody help you. Ask God to shake you. Ask God to pour you out. I'm trying to quit. I remember a time in my life when I got in that condition. I had no intention of sharing this. Dad, you know me. I'm pretty simple. My parents were so real at home. And they were, they were the same at home as they were the house. Dad didn't have a telephone voice and a preaching voice and then a talk to Doug voice. He had one voice. It was, hello. It was just Larry. He was just who he was. And I was so stupid, I thought everybody was that way. I thought everybody was real. And I know what y'all are thinking. Dude, <laughs> you need real help. I, I thought everybody was real. I mean, all you grew up is real, around is real. You think that. And I was in my early 20s, and I got sorely betrayed by a friend. And Nathan, I got settled on my lees. I said, I'm not getting out in the world. I'm not getting out in sin. But the Lord won't do good and he won't do evil. I'm just going to sit on my pew, play my notes on the piano, come back and sit down, raise my children to be good, honest, hardworking citizens, and that's it. I said, I'm, I'm done. Preach, brother Doug, preach. And your daddy came to Pleasant View Baptist Church and he preached, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. Nevertheless, the Lord stood with me. Miss Keisha, I said, I don't care what anybody else does. I ain't living this way for them. I didn't get in this thing when I was a six-year-old boy because of him, and he ain't getting me out. God put something in my soul and in my backbone that day. And I said, and God knew I was going to need it about 20 years later. Because what I went through in my early 20s didn't compare to what the guy did to me in my 40s. But you know what? Water off a duck's back. All you young people with me, this is dated. I said, loser. Yeah. I said, I said. You can be a loser if you want to. I'm in head over heels in love. Y'all didn't get the good. Something good. Not Trey. Help me, man. I said, I'm in love with Jesus. They'd help me at the black church if I'd have said that now. Y'all like my church. You're just too white. Don't get settled on your lees. Fall in love with Jesus. I'm done, preacher. Come on. He's never done you wrong. He's never done you wrong. He never will. He never will. That's the burden of my heart. That's the burden of my heart. Amen. We ought to fill it. We ought to fill it. We ought to fill it. I mean, we ought to fill it. Everybody, we ought to fill this altar. Play for us, Jonathan. Heavenly Father, thank you for preaching. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for a broken heart of a man of God that shared his truth and his heart with us. God, help me not to be settled on my leaves. God, help me to love you. Help me to be real. Help me with any blind spots. God, what a message. What truth. Help us as we sing. Bless this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing.
assim.